Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. In this video, we are going to go over a basic overview of parachains on the Polkadot and Kusama network. This video will be broken into the following sections. First, an overview of the Polkadot and Kusama network in the form of a diagram. Second, a walkthrough of a basic blockchain model. Third, we apply the basic blockchain model to a parachain model. And finally, for anybody wanting a bit more detail, we will briefly discuss some of the technical details at the end of the video. The Polkadot and Kusama networks look like this. Don't worry if this looks intimidating, we will go through it step by step. Before we begin, however, we will quickly explain what each of these symbols represent. The relay chain is the main chain on Polkadot or Kusama. It provides security and interoperability between the parachains. Speaking of parachains, here are the parachain slots. They form part of the relay chain. Each of these areas represent a parachain. The pink circles are representative of collators and the blue oblongs are representative of validators. Like we said before, don't worry if this looks intimidating, we will be explaining all of this using simple terminology right now. In order to explain how Polkadot or Kusama work, first we need to explain how a blockchain works in simple terms. The green square here represents the start of a time period where transactions can be added to a block. You can visualize this as a blank piece of paper. The white line represents the time period in which transactions can be added to the block, added to the piece of paper. And the red square represents the end of the process, where the block of transactions is validated by the miner or by the validator, depending on the consensus method of the blockchain. Now, each blockchain has users who want to add transactions to the block. These users are represented here as the blue squares. Continuing with our paper analogy, you can see that when a new block is in the process of having transactions added to it, it can be represented by a blank piece of paper. Users of the network want to add transactions to the paper, the block, the users add transactions to the paper, and at the end of the time period, the paper, or the block, cannot have any more transactions added to it due to size limitations. The miner, or validator, reviews the transactions and confirms that they are valid. For example, they confirm that nobody is trying to double spend their balance. Once the transactions in a block have been validated, they can be added to the blockchain. Then this process repeats itself. So you may be asking, how does this tie in to the complicated diagram of the Polkadot or Kusama networks that we saw before? So again, here is an overview of the network as a whole. We will now zoom in to one of the individual parachains so we can break it down further. This represents one of the parachains, and we will be looking at the role of a collator in the parachain. In our example model of a blockchain that we previously went over, the red square represented a miner or a validator. For this parachain example, let's replace this with a collator. The process is the same. The green square represents the start of a parachain block candidate, the blank piece of paper. The collator aggregates, combines all of the transactions. The collator then signs the parachain block candidate and produces state transition proofs. Think of these state transition proofs as a summary of the final account balances caused by the transactions in this block. The collators pass this parachain block candidate and the state transition proofs to the validators. The validators who are staking DOT or K 
KSM tokens, then verify the transactions within the parachain block candidate. The validators then share the verified parachain block, if they're happy with the block that is, with the relay chain. These parachain blocks are then collected together and a relay chain block candidate is produced. The validators then attempt to reach a consensus on the relay chain block candidate. Once this consensus is reached, the validated relay chain block candidate is then shared with the validators and collators and the process repeats itself. In simple terms, that is how parachains interact with the relay chain on Polkadot and Kusama. We will now go over some more detail regarding the role of collators and validators. A collator is similar to a validator on other proof of stake blockchains. However, collators do not provide security guarantees as that is handled by the Polkadot or Kusama relay chain. This is to ensure that chains connected to the DOT and Kusama networks can interact in a trust-free manner. This is similar to how smart contracts on Ethereum can interact without trust bounds. They share state and validation logic with the greater network. Due to the fact that the DOT or KSM relay chains provide the security and validation guarantees, parachains are not subject to typical blockchain attack scenarios such as a 51% attack. This is because the DOT or KSM validators, not the collators, will reject invalid blocks. It should be noted that collators maintain a full node for the relay chain and the full node for their particular parachain, which means that they retain all of the necessary information to be able to offer new blocks and execute transactions. It should be noted that in simple terms, a full node can be likened to knows the full transaction history of everything that's happened across the entire system, but didn't necessarily verify it themselves. A collator is responsible for maintaining parachains. They do this by collecting and combining parachain transactions into a parachain block candidate. This parachain block candidate will contain updates to the transaction history of users on that parachain. They also produce state transition proofs. You can basically think of state transition proofs as a summary of the final account balances caused by the transactions in that block. Validators secure the relay chain by staking either DOT or KSM tokens and they validate the transaction proof from the collators and participate in consensus with other validators. The validators play a crucial role in validating and adding blocks, group of transactions, to the relay chain and therefore extending to all parachains. This allows cross-parachain transactions via the relay chain. So, validators verify that information that they have received from collators in the parachain block candidates are valid. Secondly, they participate in the consensus voting mechanism to produce the relay chain blocks based on the validity statements from other validators regarding parachain block candidates. If a validator is proven by the consensus mechanism to be acting maliciously, such as attempting to validate incorrect transactions, then the DOT or KSM network will automatically deduct some of their staked DOT or KSM and distribute that to the other validators. 
validators who are behaving correctly will be rewarded for this with block validation rewards in the form of DOT or KSM tokens, depending on the network that the validator is active in. We have simplified a lot of the processes that we went over in this video. However, we hope that it has helped you to visualize how parachains and the DOT or KSM networks as a whole operate. If you liked this type of explainer video, then please consider subscribing to our channel and we will see you in the next video.